BZRA. Si Elizal. Forget the past, it's time to win. A corporate thing. So, ang sinasabi ko na lang. Isang mapayapang hapon Pilipinas, narito ang inyong balerina ng bayan, si Lisa Makuha, na bumabati sa lahat ng nakikinig sa DZRH at sa lahat ng nanonood ng RHTV, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga kasamahang alagad ng sining at kultura sa buong bansa. Maligayang bagong taon sa inyong lahat! Sana po ay naging mapayapa at puno ng magagandang alaala ang inyong nakaraang Christmas vacation. Bukas ay unang lunes ng 2015 at sasabak na naman tayong lahat sa trabaho. Kaya lubusin na natin ang huling araw ng bakasyon at samahan ninyo kami dito sa aming programa. Sa hapong ito, espesyal po ang ating panauhin dahil siyempre, Pambungad nating episode ito para sa bagong taon. Kaya inaanyayahan namin ang isang internationally renowned choreographer na magtatanghal ng kanyang mga obra sa Pilipinas sa kauna-unahang pagkakataon ngayong darating na Pebrero. Excited po tayo dahil sa 20th anniversary ng Ballet Manila, gaganapin ang world premiere ng kanyang bagong choreography. At yan po ang isa sa ating mga pag-uusapan kasama ang ating bisita sa hapong ito, the versatile, prize-winning choreographer, Annabel Lopez Ochoa. Si Annabel Lopez Ochoa ay isang Colombo belgian choreographer na nagtapos ng dance studies mula sa Royal Ballet Academy of Antwerp, Belgium. Bilang professional dancer, naging bahagi siya ng ilang dance company sa Germany bago napunta sa modern jazz company na Jazzex sa Netherlands. Noong 1997, naging soloista siya ng Scapino Ballet Rotterdam. Subalit pagsapit ng 2003, nagpa siya siyang maging isang full-time choreographer. Bilang choreographer, gumawa si Annabel ng mga piyesa para sa napakaraming dance companies sa buong mundo. Kabilang na ang Scapino Ballet Rotterdam, Dutch National Ballet, Ballet du Grand Theatre de Genève, the Royal Ballet of Flanders, Ballet National de Marseille, Ballet Hispanico, Le Jeune Ballet de Quebec, Pacific Northwest Ballet, Finnish National Ballet, Compagnie National de Danza, Scottish Ballet, the Washington Ballet, Ballet National Dominicano, Ballet Austin, Atlanta Ballet, Osberg Ballet, Ballet National de Cuba, Grand Rapids Ballet, Ballet Moscow at Ballet Manila. Noong 2012, ginawa niya ang kanyang unang full-length ballet na A Streetcar Named Desire para sa Scottish Ballet. Nagwagi ng ilang gantimpala at nagkaroon ng mahabang tour sa United Kingdom at Estados Unidos. Ilan sa mga choreography prizes na natanggap na ni Annabel ang 2002 Hanover's Choreographer Competition Award at ang unang gantimpala sa 2003 International Choreographers Competition sa Bomem. Noong 2007, napili siyang lumahok sa prestigyosong New York Choreographic Institute. Ilang ulit na ding naisama ang kanyang mga obra sa 10 Best Dance Highlights of the Year mula sa iba't ibang international dance publications simula pa noong 2009. Noong 2013, tinanggap niya ang Best Classical Choreography para sa A Streetcar Named Desire mula sa Circle of Critics ng National Dance Award UK. Tinanggap din ni Annabel ang Southbank Sky Arts Awards for Best New Production at naging nominado para sa Olive Yay Award Best New Dance Production sa taong ding yon. Samantala, noong 2014, nakasama ang kanyang sombrerisimo sa Best of 2013 ng US Dance Company. Ipinagmamalaki ng Art to Art na makasama sa hapong ito ang premyadong international choreographer na si Annabel Lopez Ochoa. Good afternoon, Annabelle, and welcome to Art to Art. Thank you very much. Lisa. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, don't worry, it's going to be in English. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> This program. Uh, um, and, of course, we have to start with your roots. So tell us first how you initially uh, got into dance. How did I? In- wow, that's a good question. <laughs> 
Uh, that dates from the age that I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be a tomboy, mm -hmm. and I dressed like my uh, brother. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> one day on a weekend, we went to play outside, mm -hmm. and uh, the kids in the neighborhood wanted to feel my crutch because oh. they thought, <laughs> they thought that I was a boy. boy. Okay. <laughs> and so my brother had to, uh, uh -huh. you know, protect me, and he came in between, and uh -huh. I was so happy because uh -huh. finally I was a boy. Uh -huh. So he did. We went home and he did tell it to my mom and she was like, okay, this is it. Uh -huh. I have, you know, a son and a daughter mm -hmm. and you're just going to behave like one uh -huh. and I'm going to send you to Bali. So okay. I was not very happy in the very oh, beginning okay. um, because I didn't really understand why all these exercises for all the parts of your body, mm -hmm. that's not dance. Mm -hmm. That's just exercising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I did that for two years because I had to. Mm -hmm. And in that second year, we did a little show. Mm -hmm. And in that show, we... I was on stage and I finally understood why we were doing all these exercises. Mm -hmm. It was actually to acquire freedom to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I like to express myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't like ballet, but I like the expression part. So mm -hmm. I'm going to work hard and then uh, maybe I'll, one day I'll be expressing myself. Uh -huh. And then somehow because of the hard work and the discipline that I had in me, uh, the teacher saw that I had some talents mm -hmm. and so she told my mom, mm -hmm. please could you send her to a real professional you know, school, school. Uh -huh. and uh, she agreed and mm -hmm. I was very happy with that. Uh -huh. So then I went to a professional school uh -huh. and I became a ballerina uh -huh. seven years later. Wow. And I was a girl. <laughs> and you were a girl. <laughs> I was a girl. <laughs> well, but that surprised, I mean, what surprises me more about that is your mom thought that bring sending you to ballet school would make you more girl, feminine more feminine yes. yeah i mean that uh that that, concept, that yeah. concept of i think it's with the posture has yeah. to do i had a big belly mm -hmm. and um, i was very muscular okay. i had a lot of energy which mm -hmm. i sh i still have mm -hmm. and i think that and it's, it's true when you see the pictures you mm -hmm. really can see the transformation from a an ugly duck mm -hmm. into a beautiful swan mm -hmm. so somehow you hold yourself up, yes. up high uh -huh. and uh, it does make you more feminine. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's a position of the ballerina in mm -hmm. the dance world, you really, yeah, you mm -hmm. learn to be uh, elegant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. wow. parents out there, <laughs> you want your parents. Send your, your, <laughs> your, your children, children to, to ballet, ballet school. <laughs> yes. Not just the girls, but the boys too. The boys too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you guys have a lot of boys here. <laughs> in Bali, Manila, yes. yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, well, you went into choreography. I know this from um, working with you at a very young age. Yes. Yeah. So I was in the uh, professional ballet school in Antwerp, the mm -hmm. Royal Ballet of Flanders. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 11, it was the, actually the week before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing a class, the teacher came in and she said, well, I'm going to have coffee. Mm. And you <laughs> are going to stay here for an hour with the pianist and you will create one minute of choreography. Uh -huh. So I thought the word choreography sounded really cool first. Uh -huh. I had uh -huh. no idea what it was, uh -huh. but we had to choose a friend and do something. And after one hour, she came back and mm -hmm. we presented it to uh, the other students. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to myself, I swore in myself, mm -hmm. if I could do this the rest of my life, I would be the happiest person on the earth. Wow, you were, you I was were 11. 11? Yes. Wow. For me, it was uh -huh. like time did not exist. Mm. It was one hour, but it felt like two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think I was fascinated by the fact that I created my own reality mm -hmm. and that you could escape what was happening in the world on that day. Yeah. So uh -huh. uh, once again, a way of expressing, but then creating your own reality was very attractive to uh -huh. me. And so I knew that day that, well, it's not that I knew, I just loved it. Yeah. And so from that on, I just, any opportunity that I could get, I would take it and then choreograph and mm -hmm. I don't know how I got my you know fellow students to every time they had a free hour uh, and uh -huh. there was a free studio yeah. I would get you them would be in that yes yeah uh -huh. and it started you know with music of Madonna and uh, Michael Jackson okay. those kind of uh -huh. things uh -huh. and it moved on and it became more and more serious mm -hmm. until uh, I did it you know in in the professional uh, mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. and um, I was that determined mm -hmm. to finish my pieces that the director noticed that, that I was a little bit more uh, enthusiastic about it than the other dancers. Mm -hmm. And so I think at the age of 27, mm -hmm. he told me that he was inviting me to make a piece for the company okay. and not for the workshop. Uh -huh. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, wait. Before we go into the choreographer part of you, yeah. let's go back to the dancer part of yeah. you. So uh, you you went to the Royal uh, Ballet School at Flanders. Yes. In, and then uh, how uh, um, how was your dancer career? Dan career That's as correct. a dancer first. Uh, well, I was uh, I was trained as a classical ballerina. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the age of 15, we finally got to wear a tutu for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay. <laughs> uh, and I, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, uh-oh, this doesn't fit me. Uh -huh. And so I knew from that time, I had three more years in that you know, ballet school, yeah. classical ballet school. I knew that this is not who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. I'm not that romantic, I'm mm -hmm. not that fragile. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to express that. I want mm -hmm. to be more in the ground. So I finished mm -hmm. the studies and I knew I would go to contemporary dance. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, started in a very small company in the south of Germany, mm -hmm. where they did modern dance theater. Mm. There's a lot of dance theater in uh, Germany. They're very well known for that. Uh, so I did that for two years, mm -hmm. and I felt that that wasn't it either, because I had too much energy. Mm -hmm. And I had learned all these technical tricks from the ballet school, and I was not using anything than just roll on the floor and tell my name. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> okay. okay, that's a little too minimal for you know uh -huh. somebody who's 18. Mm -hmm. So I looked for a company, and I saw a performance of this company called Jazz X. Mm -hmm. And it's a company that was based on jazz and modern dance. Mm -hmm. And I saw them, and I thought, that's where I have to go. Mm -hmm. I auditioned and they took me. Mm -hmm. And that company was based in The Hague in Holland. Oh, and that's okay. how I got there, where I'm still based. So now you're still based in I'm still in based Amsterdam. there. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for four years. Mm -hmm. And then the, they got subvention cuts. So we folded the company. Mm -hmm. And I was very uh, fortunate to find another job, like right you know, in January, middle of January. Mm -hmm. I joined the Scapino Ballet, mm -hmm. which is a contemporary uh, company in Rotterdam mm. and so I did that for eight years and then I had enough. <laughs> I, had I, enough I, of dancing? Or? I, yes, I didn't yeah. want to be on stage anymore. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm not exhibitionistic. Mm -hmm. I think that as a dancer you need a little bit of mm -hmm. exhibitionism because mm -hmm. I was always in the, in, you know, in the wings before I got art and I always thought I hope they don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> But I love dancing. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's a problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Okay. But uh, uh -huh. I love dancing, and so that's why I was doing it because I was expressing something. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like so much the fact that people were in the audience watching. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, you know, choreographing more and more, and then I knew at a certain point I was on stage, and I was waiting for my musical cue, mm -hmm. and I was thinking of my own choreography, mm -hmm. and then suddenly I thought. <gasps> Oh my God, I'm on stage, I have to dance. Uh -huh. And, and yeah. then I knew that was kind of a cue for me okay. that it's time to leave the yeah. stage. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. I'm expecting for my own dancers to be concentrated and in the moment, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was clear to stop. Oh, okay. Um, so mm -hmm. even while you were dancing, you were still choreographing yeah. very actively. Or No, I mean, obviously less actively than, than now. We had a, a you know, a yearly workshop uh -huh. in the company that I was. I was fortunate to have that. Mm. And so it was in June, and mm. I was already preparing in October for something in June. Okay. And uh, then I got some, you know, opportunities to do things with uh, theatre, because uh -huh. I was injured for like four weeks, and mm. so my director put me there with a theatre director, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was really amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I had a few of these in my free time. Mm -hmm. And for schools, I did little things, you know, because as a dancer, you're very busy. Yeah. You don't have that much time left yeah. for your own hobby. Uh -huh. So at the time, it was very much hobby. But uh -huh. yes, I was always a choreographer because when I'm in the studio with a choreographer, I observe what they do. Okay. I always ask myself, why do they make that change? Why mm -hmm. do they make that choice? Mm -hmm. uh, so usually the dancer sits in the back and the mm -hmm. choreographer is in the front. Mm -hmm. I would always sit where the, the choreographer is on his side to see what he was seeing. So mm -hmm. yeah, I always sort of had that third eye mm -hmm. of what was the whole thing happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was always more fascinating than just do your steps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so, can you walk us through your? Um, well, your you started choreographing. I'm sure concert pieces, and then I think it was in with the Scottish Ballet that you did your first full length. Yes. Uh, a streetcar named Desire. Yes. I mean, sorry. Yeah. Yes. A streetcar a named street. Desire. Um, so, uh, tell us about that. Your first full length. 
Uh, well, it really was um, by accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. I happen to a be lot of things <laughs> happen. A lot of great things <laughs> happen by, by accident. accident. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I was at the Scottish Ballet, and we were doing a workshop. Five choreographers were invited, mm -hmm. and we worked with music of Steve Reich. Mm -hmm. So it was not going to be presented in theatre. And there was this uh, theatre director who was visiting the company because she was invited to make The Tempest mm. with the Scottish Ballet in 2012. Mm -hmm. So she was going from studio to studio and then she said to the director, I want to work with this girl, mm. <laughs> which was me. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I was really surprised because I wasn't there for that. Yeah. And then so I was like, okay, let's do that. So mm -hmm. I sent my work. Uh, she agreed and then next thing I hear is that she has to pull out because of the Olympics of 2012 mm -hmm. and she would be too busy. Mm -hmm. So I was the remaining choreographer okay. and the director Ashley Page at the time looked for another director because that was his idea to combine choreographer and theatre director together. I see. And so he came up with Nancy Meckler mm -hmm. who uses a lot of movement in her own work mm -hmm. and she told me you can choose the piece but I'll give you the choices. Anna Karenina, a book like this. Uh -huh. A streetcar named Desire, a book like, a book like this. <laughs> okay. Or uh, the story of how Mary Shelley and all those writers went to Switzerland and she wrote a Frankenstein. Uh -huh. So the Frankenstein story, not my thing. Okay. So I started Anna Karenina yeah. and a streetcar named Desire. Uh -huh. And you know, with the Russian books, there's yeah. a lot of people passing, so yes. you have to sometimes read it, yes. go uh -huh. back. Uh -huh. uh, so I finished a streetcar named Desire way before the other. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I s closed the book and I thought, why aren't we telling that story? Mm. This mm -hmm. is an amazing drama and I have never seen it on stage with dance. Mm -hmm. And I always hear theater groups doing it and, you mm -hmm. know, earning prize or winning prize. Well, I don't know, but I understand mm -hmm. why for an actress, it's an amazing character, the main character of mm -hmm. Blanche. Mm -hmm. So I said, I want to do a street car in She mm -hmm. was like, okay, I did 15 years ago with my own company. So mm -hmm. she was really good at directing the piece and and so we we came together for a week in london uh -huh. we did the entire score uh -huh. you know uh -huh. as well as music and what the scenes would be mm -hmm. and um and then six months later we put it on the scottish ballet mm -hmm. and well it's not often that there is bad endings in ballet com you know narratives yeah and there are no party scenes or happiness or you know Christmas uh, <laughs> tree. Uh -huh. So we were not sure that the uh, the ballet audience would uh, appreciate such mm. a hard story because mm -hmm. it's quite you know. Um, so we didn't. We really did not expect it would be such a huge success, mm -hmm. and we were very happy to share that story and mm -hmm. also that the ballet audience was you know yeah. ripe enough to uh -huh. to get it. And yeah, and it won an award. Uh, it won two awards. Two awards. Yes, yeah. it the won critic the, the Critic Circle. The Critic Circle, and it won the South Bank Awards, mm -hmm. and we got nominated for an Olivier Awards. Wow! And it's now going to be revived uh, in the States in uh -huh. two years, uh -huh. and this year they're going to in a couple of months they will go to on tour. Uh -huh. We did for a whole month in the States. Wow, yeah. that's so exciting. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Marami pa po tayong pag-uusapan kasama ang premiadong choreographer na si Annabel Lopez Ochoa. Dito pa rin sa Art to Art. Magbabalik po kami pagkatapos na ilang paalala. Programang hatid ay sining at kulturang para sa lahat. Magbabalik ang Art to Art. Schedule ng mga inaabangang konsyerto. Update sa mga magagandang panoorin sa mga tanghala at teatro. Narito na ang Art to Art Calendar. Narito ang ating Arts Calendar. Sa Sining Biswal, iniahandog ng Cultural Center of the Philippines sa pakikipagtulungan ng CMA Bernardo Foundation for Fine Arts Incorporated at sa suporta ng Sony, ang retrospective exhibition ng geometric abstractionist na si Constancio Maria Anastasio Bernardo. Ito ay bahagi ng pagdiriwang ng 101st birth anniversary ni Bernardo. Tampok ang 85 obra niya sa Bulwagang Juan Luna at Bulwagang Fernando Amorsolo ng CCP sa Rojas Boulevard, Metro Manila. Nagbukas nitong November 20, makikita ang exhibit hanggang February 15, 2015. Para sa karagdagang detalye, tumawag sa 832-3702. Mag-email sa ccp.exhibits at gmail.com o bumisita sa website na culturalcenter.gov.ph. 
Usapang sining at kultura para sa lahat. Kasama ang balirina ng bayan, si Lisa Makuha. Art to Art. Kasama pa rin natin ang internationally renowned choreographer na si Annabel Lopez Ochoa. Okay, Annabel, you came to Ballet Manila not by accident, but no. by a very high, high, but by being very highly recommended mm -hmm. to us by Mr. Graham Watts, mm -hmm. who uh, knew the company, uh, knew our strengths, knew our weaknesses, and uh, recommended you to create a piece. And I'm very for, grateful for that. For <laughs> Ballet Manila. Uh, we are very excited and we are very, very grateful that you were able to find the time in your busy schedule to fly all the way to the Philippines and create a piece on a new company. You've never worked with us before. Mm -hmm. I know that must have been quite difficult, but did you have an idea of what the piece that you were going to do even before you arrived in the Philippines? Yeah, I, I always come uh, prepared mm -hmm. and I always try to see what, which country is it? What kind of company is it? Mm -hmm. What is the, the, you know, the context? Mm -hmm. And you told me it's going to be 20 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so we're celebrating. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Confettis, no. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought you told me you had a lot of men yes. in your company. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh -huh. I usually okay. make uh, choreographies with more men than women. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I was looking, you know, uh, what do I know about the Philippines? Mm -hmm. And I've never c come here before, so I didn't know much. But I know the only thing I know about Asia is Bali, mm -hmm. because I've been there three times. Mm -hmm. And Bali is uh, based on Hinduism mm -hmm. and have a lot of rituals. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea of rituals. Mm -hmm. And there's one ritual that uh, got stuck with me. It's puja. Mm -hmm. And puja is the offering of the flower that they do every morning and every night mm -hmm. and you know as a tourist you come there and you think it's really cute mm -hmm. and it's pretty and it's you know it's on your doorstep you're always yeah. walking uh -huh. on it but you know and they spend a lot of time doing it and um, and then you go back home and when you come out of the door there are no flowers mm -hmm. and then you start missing it you start mm -hmm. realizing how beautiful it is mm -hmm. um, not just the flowers and the fact that they put energy and time to do the flowers uh, and you know to bless the house the little hut where you're staying but also the fact that for them it's to say thank you for this day yeah and I think in nowadays it's going so fast we just sometimes take it for granted that it's all there mm. and um, except if you get in a situation when you have no money <laughs> then you're grateful for that that you have it all but you know just being grateful that the Sun goes up mm. and comes down so mm. I thought it would be um, because I'm in Asia, mm -hmm. I would want to do something about one of those rituals that we don't have and also my view on that ritual. So it's mm -hmm. not going to be an Asian ballet, mm -hmm. it's going to be a ballet with my view on it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I call the piece Bloom. And Bloom. Okay. <laughs> Bloom. <laughs> okay, there we go. the title of the piece. Uh -huh. uh, Bloom is, you know, when a flower starts to grow. Yes. And um, I thought it was also a nice title because it always happens in the morning mm -hmm. when the sun comes up that you see those flowers on your doorsteps. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a cast of 19 men and I have a cast of five women mm -hmm. in tutus, which will be my very first ballet in tutus. Really? Yes. Ah. And I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the women represent the flower, they represent the, the offering, mm -hmm. and the men represent the, the gratitude, they mm -hmm. bow towards the women. Uh -huh. So uh, the piece is not done yet, so yeah. I still don't know how it's going to go, but mm -hmm. we're almost there. Mm -hmm. and okay. Uh, okay, and the creative process with Ballet Manila, what was it like? Um, well, I, I really like it, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you said, I travel uh, to many countries mm -hmm. and I encounter many cultures, mm -hmm. many different companies, big, small with all the rankings, no mm -hmm. rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say, and I don't know if it's the Filipino mentality or the Manila, uh, Bale Manila mentality, mm -hmm. but they're very focused. Mm -hmm. They learn very fast. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of respect for what's happening and mm -hmm. they don't judge. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you go to company and you already feel the before they even try something. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's make it you know a bit harder. Here yeah. it's like, We'll take whatever you give us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make the best out of it. Uh -huh. and, and that's so beautiful, that generosity of dancers towards mm -hmm. uh, a creator. Because mm -hmm. you don't know if it's going to work. Mm -hmm. When you create, it's, mm -hmm. there's always a risk. Yeah. There's a, an, enigma, an enigma and mysterious. Yes. That's yes. great. But there's uh -huh. also a risk that sometimes 
it will not work. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong about it, it's just that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, you really need the support of your dancers mm -hmm. who are going to convey that message that you came, you know, me with rituals and you know, <laughs> sun coming up, I see all these, uh -huh. you know, lights coming up, but uh -huh. maybe it won't. Mm -hmm. But uh, they've been, yeah, amazing until mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and uh, beautiful. And I'm working with dancers from 35 to dancers who are like 17 or 16. 16, yes. I know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what's that like? You're working with uh, several generations of dancers, yeah. in one, all in one company. Yes, I mean, I can feel the younger generation has that respect to the older generation, mm -hmm. and they always stand a bit in the back, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, what I like also, I mean, I haven't worked many weeks with them yet, mm -hmm. uh, is that they laugh a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and they make jokes at each other. Yes. And they give uh -huh. each other nicknames. Yes. And I don't know that. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> naming people with their nicknames and yeah. everybody laughs. I'm like, I have no idea what they're laughing uh -huh. about. So, um, no, it's nice to have that concentration, hard work and uh, laughter. Mm -hmm. There's the joy and enjoyment mm -hmm. of making art mm -hmm. and the excitement that we both are going to go Yes. and find out if it works or not. That's right, and we're going to find out this February. Yes, very uh -huh. soon. <laughs> very, very soon. Okay, um, is this the first uh, Asian company that you're creating? Yes, Oh, it wow, is. okay. Um, and so you mentioned your creation process. It starts with research. Yes. Does it happen for all your pieces? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, um, usually I have the music before I come. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes I have the theme before the music. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the music really tells me what the theme is. Mm -hmm. um, and usually I know if it's going to be a large group or a smaller group mm -hmm. or uh, I think the journey of a piece. Mm -hmm. And although everything is on paper, mm -hmm. I write it, you know, just one little paper. Mm -hmm. I come to a company. I saw the notebook. <laughs> yeah, the <Yeah>. notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I come to a company and then I forget everything. Mm -hmm. And I see who I have in front of me. Mm -hmm. Because there's, I think that's the magic. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, maybe you get surprised mm -hmm. by people and you only had one uh, main character and maybe somebody else is also beautiful mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. want to, you know, uh, put them a bit more into the front than yeah. what you thought first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yes, I am prepared, I research, I know the journey, and then I forget everything and I make, I make what there is in oh, the studio. Okay, yeah. okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so aside from the world premiere of Ballet Manila in 2015, uh, in February, okay, that's February 28th yes. and March 1, uh, in Alio Theater. I'm plugging it already. <laughs> um, what other works are in store for you in 2015? Tell us about oh. your projects that are coming up. Um, 2015. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm going to be working with six dancers of uh, American Ballet Theater and mm -hmm. Daniel Simkin. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a project that is infused with video mm -hmm. projection. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a new work for uh, the Joffrey Ballet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a new work for uh, Ballet am Gartnerplatz mm -hmm. in Munich. Uh -huh. I'm going to make a new work for uh, Incol Ballet uh -huh. in Colombia. I will do a, a full length ballet for the Grand Rapids Ballet, uh -huh. the Dangerous Liaison, uh -huh. but Gothic. Uh -huh. And then I'll make, an, I'm preparing a new work, a uh, full length work uh, for Ballet Hispanico that will be Evita. Uh -huh. Wow. And, uh, and many more. <laughs> so you're not going to be staying in Amsterdam uh, for a long period of time. Yes. And you're going to be racking up the mileage. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I have to actually start writing down what, uh, what I have to do. before. It, it's uh -huh. very strange how that develops. Before I was waiting for June mm -hmm. so that I could make her work. Mm -hmm. And now I have to write it down that I don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> What is all planned? Uh -huh. But I think uh -huh. I have like 15 uh, uh, creations planned for the wow. future. Okay, so. okay. Well, you mentioned you were 11 yes. and you, you really thought that, I mean, you decided for yourself that I will not be happier doing anything else. Yes. Okay, but if you were not a choreographer, what would you have been? I would be a film editor. Ah, 
still creating, <laughs> still, still cre creating, still yeah. telling stories, still telling rhythm, a story, and, yeah. and actually I, I, I do it sometimes also uh -huh. for people. Okay, I uh, cut their stories, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah, <laughs> and still an artist, still an artist, yes, forever an artist. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for being our guest. Our New Year's guest Yay. in Art to Art and uh, of course we really look forward to the world premiere in February yeah. of Bloom. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Hanggang sa susunod na linggo, samahan ninyo kami ulit dito sa Art to Art kung saan ang usapang sining at kultura ay para sa lahat. Ito po ang inyong balirina ng bayan, Lisa Makuha, nagpupugay sa artistang Pilipino. <laughs>